Very welcome. Um, getting ready for the 2019 season over in Sussex. Obviously, it's another big year for you because every year you play, you're actually playing for another year and another year and another year. So, um, how are things shaping up for you um, leading into the 2019 season? Um, I, I suppose you could say that the, the shaping up pretty well. I mean, um, sort of. This is, like you said, it's probably an even bigger year than last year. Um, probably, you know, the year. Twenty-one years old. Um, haven't played sort of one format last year. I think looking to solidify a spot in, in the other two, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I know it's a big year. I'm looking forward to it. Just looking forward to keep enjoying my cricket and and, and having fun. I was the the there's there's training going on now. Preseason training. You have a few teammates who are with the England setup. Um, you have Ali Robinson just coming back from injury. He was uh, explosive to, at the beginning of the season, picked up the injury and struggled later on. But for for you, missing this, well, sure, sure, hmm, but you're missing a bit of preseason. How do you think you're going to be able to just hit that ground running and be ready to start? Because I think you're, the first seconds game is what, April 28th, I believe? 28th. Yeah, I mean, it's not, um, I don't feel this. Doing, doing any harm really to myself or to my prep. Um, mm. I mean, when, when I get back, um, I'm going straight to South Africa the, the next couple of days um, okay. for about 10 days. So um, that'll sort of get any kinks out that, that, are, that are there at the moment. But um, I think this break by just, you know, bringing home with, I get the bit in my teeth again to play, um, you know, so I probably needed another break and stuff. And, um, you know, but I'm still feeling confident going back into the, into the, into the year and, and um, Hopefully, you know, find a, a spot to start in, in the team. Right. How was the adjusting to the the three formats? Uh, you have already said you solidified, kind of solidified a, a T20 spot, but the the 50 overs and the the four days and the the longer version of the game. What do you need to be telling yourself more regularly? Because it it takes that patience. It takes that what I don't have time for in a 2020. I have time for in a in a longer version of the game. Um, yeah, I just, I, I mean, it's that big A word, mm -hmm. I'm assuming they're using football as well, called adapting. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think that's probably the main thing in, in sort of when you're, when you're chopping and changing through formats, um, because the ball's still the same, it's still the same size, mm -hmm. weight's the same, um, the pitches aren't really too much different, um, and, and the surroundings are usually the same as well, so, um, I think, yeah, I think it's just adapting, um, not only to the format, but to to the situation of the game on in that particular day. Um, sometimes in, in the longer format of the game, you can play like it's a one day game. Um, sometimes in, in one day cricket, you can play like it's a T20. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah I, ju I just think it's adapting, um, and and majority of the time, the team or the individuals who do it, who do it the fastest um, come out on top. Right. Big year for England in cricket because you're hosting the World Cup, um, but also. After the World Cup, it's it's no secret England's going to have to sort of change that team around, whether it be the Test team, the One Day team, the Twenty Twenty team, because if they're looking for the next World Cup, obviously they're going to need to get a fresh group of youngsters in to to, to gain them some experience <coughs> and in the lead up to that one. So, looking at that, this year is very important for a lot of people around, especially um, one of your teammates. Um, um, Jaffa, yeah. yeah, he's he's actually gone to the West Indies to play in the T20, yeah. No, he's not. No, he's, that's Chris. Chris oh, Chris, 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 yes, yes, Chris Jordan, yes. Yeah. But um, Jaffa's been the one that they've been talking about for quite yeah. some time. Yeah. Um, so you have that in your stable. You have that. There's teammates right next to you that are knocking on the door. Does that give you drive to want to want to follow that 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 lead? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I'm I'm pretty close with those two. Mm -hmm. um, I used to, you know, live with Joff as well. So, mm -hmm. me and him got on, got on really well. And and you know, seeing seeing the way that those two have gone in the last few years, especially Joff, um, you know, he's taken off and just hasn't looked back really. And and you know, every club or any any franchise around the world would love to have a signature. And now to see that you know he's so close to playing for England, um, I'm I'm very happy for him. Um, I'm looking forward to actually watching him play, and hopefully they pick him in the World Cup. Um, but yeah, it definitely gives me the drive and, and 
gives me something, you know, the inner belief that that is possible, um, you know, to get that far. And, but like I said, I'm just, you know, looking forward to putting in performances at Sussex and not looking too right. far. Yeah. Last year, um, you guys had Gillespie come in. Um, what did he bring to that team? Um, you know, I mean, in my opinion, I just think he brought um, a sense of, like, clarity. Um, you know, the, the dressing rooms, everyone's a bit more clear on, on, on how they want to go about winning games of cricket. Um, there's a sense of calmness there. Um, he, he, you know, he's, he's, he's really chilled out around the boys, which, which I think everyone has benefited from at the club, you know. Um, and he hasn't, he hasn't, um, he, he puts, he puts the ball in your court. Um, he gives you, he gives you the tools. It's just whether you want to, you want to pick them up and use them. Um, and you know, he's, he was really good last year and he, I, I don't see why this year or the next couple of years, he, he won't be even better for us. Um, getting straight to a T20 final in his first year, um, just shows how far the club's come in that sort of six months. Mm. Um, and you know everyone at the club's looking forward to the next six um, with him, and, and you know maybe a couple more years to come. Mm. Mm. Oh, now that you're home, what are you going to be doing? You just going to be relaxing? Um, a bit of both. Yeah. Um, a bit of relaxation, um, but also still training um, to make sure that when I do step foot in South Africa, I'm, I'm ready to go. Mm. Um, give myself the best chance to sort of make sure I go into the start of the season without any injuries and. I give myself the best chance to, to play, um, you know, the first couple of months as well. So when you relax, are you going to be doing any running, any cardio training, any weightlifting, things that sort, or just relaxing? No, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Definitely. I think that's what I'm, when I leave here, I think that's where I'll be going. Probably on South Shore somewhere. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's um, definitely just making sure I'm getting myself prepared. Um, like Girl said, it's a pretty big year for me, so I, I, I would like to go into it feeling that I'm in the best physical condition that I can be. Right. Um, and, you know, the, the rest of it should take care of itself. Really. Now, you're going to South Africa. It's quite warm there. Um, you guys will come back to England. Uh, it'll still be a little on the chilly side, ball swinging. How do you how do you plan to, to get ready for that? You're going to pre-season in, in South Africa, but start a season in, in conditions that are that are totally different. Um, again, I just I just think it's that's adapting. Um, yeah. Obviously, the conditions in South Africa might be a bit different to early season in England. Mm -hmm. um, but again, yeah, it's just important that the boys adapt. Um, but it'll be nice to get outside, get some sun on the back again, um, be able to be outside and, and you know have have fun with the boys and, and get a couple of games in as well, which you know I can s sort of hopefully push my case to to be in that first eleven come come April. Mm -hmm. Can you reflect on the first time you went overseas? Uh, what was it like for you to where you are now? What's it like for you? Um, first time to overseas. Oh, to Sussex. Oh, Sussex. Oh, Sussex. Oh, Sussex. 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 Oh, Sussex. Oh, Sussex. Sussex. Yeah. yeah, excuse me. Um, you yeah, said I was actually like thirteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have said Sussex. Please forgive me. The first time I was at Sussex. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. Um, I remember the first day I walked in. I was going for my trial, and um, Matt Pryor was actually walking in the same time as me. Wow. Um, so it was a bit like, it was a bit starstruck, um, <laughs> you know, obviously seeing him play on TV and, right. and um, you know, just know what, how good he was and what he, what he had done for England at the time. Um, and he, you know, he just spoke to me like I was someone that he knew for 10 years, like, you know, you're right mate and carried on about his business. Right. Um, and then, you know, walked upstairs in the dressing room and there was the rest of the professional squad who you'd seen play before. and. You know, you obviously think to yourself, well, I want to be involved with these players. And, you know, seeing players like Luke Wright and, and Chris Nash and all those boys who were, who were there at the time. Um, and now looking on to <coughs> sort of three or four more years on, um, sitting next to Luke Wright in the change room after we win and stuff like that. And him telling me stories about old times and stuff. And, it, you know, it just, it, it's, it's, um, it's interesting, but, you know, it feels like everything's just happened so quickly. Right. Um, now that I'm just, you know, sitting there rubbing shoulders with him and then you got big players coming in like, you know, Rashid Khan, um, yeah. who we have and and um, you know, other overseas such as David Vies and those sorts of boys who played international cricket and stuff. So okay. it's interesting. Yeah. What goals have you set for yourself for the season? Um I think, you know, the biggest one would obviously like I said earlier, just just, you know, solidifying a spot. Um and hopefully if I've if I'm playing regularly in the team I'm I'm helping the boys to win trophies. Um I don't really want to look too far ahead in terms of all the England stuff and 
you know, people always ask me about it and stuff, but it's not something that really crosses my mind too much. Um, I'm just more interested in, in playing at the club where I'm signed at the moment um, and, you know, helping the boys there. You know, I really enjoy the environment down there. The dressing room's, you know, really healthy and, and I'm, you know, just looking forward to, to hopefully lifting trophies with mm -hmm. that bunch of players. You've done a video, I think, last year with um, Tino Bess. Is it six balls? Oh, Fidel, yeah. Fidel, yeah, 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 yeah. How much fun was that, putting that together? Because, obviously, six balls, what was it, 15 runs? Something yeah, something of that nature, yeah, yeah. yeah. How much I mean, fun is it doing stuff like that? Again, that was interesting because, you know, obviously I got picked in the MCC team for that particular tour. Right. Um, and obviously Fidel was in the team. Um, and I played, I played against him before mm -hmm. in England. Um, but never really sat down and, and, you know, spoke to him. And the day before, we actually... Um, sort of had a team bonding session like you know and sort of not not a little party but you know a few drinks and some food and stuff together and me and him just sat down and we just talked for about 20 25 minutes and he had known he knows a f you know quite a few of the boys from bermuda as mm -hmm. well like the older people so you know we spoke about a few of them and stuff and just cricket in general and you know other other things around the world but to then you know sit there and do a video with him um again was a bit like well, you know, this is you know Fidel Edwards who, who done it for so long in West Indies, for West Indies, um, and how to just be rubbing shoulders on the same team with him and picking his brains about certain things was, mm. was you know something that I'll not forget. We we have a multitude of players playing football professionally. You're one playing cricket. How difficult is it to make that professional step in that sport in in, in the sport of cricket? Um, I mean, I. It, yeah, it's it's a little bit more difficult in football in the in the sense that there's not as many teams or leagues. Um, so I, I I guess that if you do make this step, then you're doing something and you're doing something right um, and something something's going well for you. Um, but I think I think for me it was just a sense of believing that I was I was good enough to to first get signed and then f again to play um, in the professional game. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have the belief when I first when I first signed in the academy. Um, I sort of got signed and was just playing academy games and not really realizing, you know, what, what I was doing or or how far I'd come. Um, but then once I, you know, got mixed around the first team squad a bit more, um, and, you know, people started coming up to you and patting you on the back, oh, well, better this weekend or during the week and stuff, and then you start to sort of believe and realize, like, you know, actually maybe you've got something that someone else sees in you as well and and um yeah once I once I sort of got that belief, um, you know, the fire in the in the in the tummy and or the chest as you wanna say, whatever, just went again. Um and you know, I, I so I guess I sort of just kicked on from there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we have to break for yeah. news in a few minutes, but um over the years your success, who is who has been those people behind you that have that have kind of molded you to the person you are today? Um, I definitely say my parents. Um, they're they they're top of the ladder, definitely. You know, mom and dad always. I, I hate I hate hearing it from my mom whenever she calls me. She um, <laughs> she she ask me what happened today or how did you get out? And I was like, I don't know, I just got out. Um, but obviously, you know, she's you know she doesn't do it. She does it because she cares. Right. Um, and same with my same with my daddy. You you, you call me or. or you know, his first words were like, why you play that shot or something like that? Or why didn't get to 50 first? Um, but no, you know, like they do it because they care and, mm -hmm. and you know, that's that's quite nice. Um, obviously, it's, it's hard when they're not there with you to see it or, or to experience it. But, um, you know, knowing that they're always watching. Um, I know I know my daddy takes off from work sometimes to watch. Mm -hmm. um, and I know my mom has her iPad or something set up at her desk <laughs> to watch and stuff. So... Um, you know, it's, it's nice to know that they support there. Right. Um, and then just again, immediate family, my sisters, um, they're always they're always watching as well. Um, you know, knowing that that's, that supports there as well. And, and you know, you, you get a text message or something off them at the end of the day. You know, um, you know, it just it just it just feels nice. So. Right. Welcome back to Inside Sports Talk Radio uh, here on this Monday, February twenty fifth, the last Monday of February. Two months going already in. Yeah, but uh, we want to finish up our conversation with Delray Rollins, who's in studio, and Kenny Thompson, who has stayed in studio. Um, gentlemen, obviously, y you guys have seen and been around your sport 
Um, what, is, what has helped you grow personally being at, at, at a high level? Uh, I think some of the like exposure. Um, once I sort of got in the professional setup, um, seeing how good um, players actually are and, and how well they train. Because um, obviously, um, fans only see what, what, what we do in the field, um, what, what comes on TV. Um, but actually what goes on behind closed doors is, was um, something that really opened my eyes. Um, and it actually just made me want to get better. Um, it just made me wanted to want to learn new things. Um, I always I always ask, you know, I've, I've got a pretty good relationship with Mike Yardi, um, who's our batting coach. Um, and every time I have a session with him, I always ask some random question to him, and he's uh, you could tell he's looking at me like, what 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 like what are you actually thinking right now? Right. Um, but somewhere down along the line, that question comes back, um, and you know it sort of clicks in my head, or, or maybe something clicks in his head where he was like, okay, maybe why I see he was acting, why he was acting that, or, or I would say to myself, okay, no, I see, you know, why, why he said that to me. Um, and it was just, you know, the wanting to learn and wanting to get better. Um, because, you know, when I, when I first joined, when I first joined, I saw sort of, I was how far off the pace I was, um, even though they had given me the opportunity. Um, and, and, you know, I feel that sort of in two or three years I've, I've come on a lot um, and my ability has gotten better and also my knowledge for the game has, has grown a lot um, just listening to people and, and you know they say it's a big thing when you just listen and you don't speak but you know being a sponge and, and I've done that a lot for probably the most part of two years um, and you know that's helped me to sort of grow into the player I, I am right now I guess. Audio